Theo Leggett, BBC News. Fostering agencies are at a breaking point in England and Wales due to a huge increase in children entering care during the pandemic. The largest not-for-profit fostering and adoption agency in the UK, Barnardo's, saw a 57% increase in the number of children being referred to its services between April and December last year, compared with the same period the year before. In Wales, there was a 30% increase. Greater numbers of vulnerable children are suffering from neglect, domestic and sexual abuse and the strains of lockdown, the charity says. Let's talk now to Michael McKenzie, who is a foster parent who's been fostering for more than 10 years, and Lewis Oberts, who's a social worker and vice chair of the British Association of Social Workers. Thank you very much for talking to us. It's Lewis Roberts, I beg your pardon. Um, Mr McKenzie, let me start with you. I know you were fostering a 12-year-old boy during the first lockdown in England. What was that like for the young boy? Well, what I would say that was like is, if you think generally where, you know, when I listen to the news a lot, a lot of families are struggling to try and see their families, um, people that are not in care. And, you know, I'm hearing it on the news every day about, you know, even like at Christmas time, people were really desperate to see their family. And I think these are the kind of things that I'm hearing from, you know, people who are in care. And that is the, the biggest struggle. I mean, one of the things that um, children in foster care might have to go through is um, contact. Mm. So, they, you know, before the lockdown, it might have been that they were seeing their parents once a week or twice a week at a contact centre. Uh, during the lockdown, all of that had to stop because suddenly you had a situation where families weren't able to meet. Um, and for myself and my family, um, you know, we had to consider, okay, so, you know, if you listen to what Boris has said, Boris has said not to mix. So we've got our family and then there's another family somewhere else. So then straight away, everything had to go online. Um, so, you know. So, uh, so, so for... for for, for a young man in foster care during a pandemic, trying to keep in touch with his birth parents, you're saying that's really tough, that's hard? That's very hard, yeah. Mm. And, and what, the reason why I'm trying to generalise is that, you know, I want people, everybody to understand that, you know, normal families who are not in care, they're going through the same thing. Sure. They are really struggling, you know, to try and keep in contact with their family. And for a child in care, that's just magnified. You know, because obviously they're 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 not with their family; they're with a different family, so it's it's magnified even more. And what does that um, mean for you as a foster carer? What extra pressures does it put on you when you're trying to care for someone like a twelve-year-old boy? Well, um, you have to be very empathetic and really understand it from the child's point of view and also their parents' point of view, because obviously that's where that's where the break is. Yeah. So it's really you know watching the child, making sure that they're okay, listening spending time with them um, just to make sure that they are feeling okay, you know, trying to just ask questions, how are they feeling regularly. Mr Roberts, let me ask you as a social worker and vice chair of the British Association of Social Workers, what do you make of these, I mean it's such a dramatic rise in those seeking uh, fostering services from simply Barnardo's, that's just one agency. Um, their uh, referrals rose by 57% between April and December last year. Yeah, um, first of all, good morning. morning. Uh, I think the, the, the first thing I would say is, listeners, I think we're all feeling the pressure of the pandemic. Um, all, all families, all children of families, and I think in your introduction you, you alluded to it, um, that you know, more, more parents are struggling in terms of their, their mental health, and more children are struggling with their mental health. Families are really struggling financially. So we're seeing more referrals to children and family services, but most importantly, we're seeing more um, sort of serious incidents coming forward to children and family services. So that's why we're seeing an increase in, in care numbers, and that's putting a lot of pressure um, on, on foster care services across the UK. And when you say serious incidents, what are you referring to? Yeah, so, I mean, social workers are working really hard to ensure that children can stay with their families. That's, that's the first thing to say. Um, but there are occasions where um, where family situations become so so difficult and so challenging that, that children have to come into the, into care, um, and the sorts of incidents we might talk about are, are serious domestic um, abuse, um, you know, uh, family issues of, uh, of of family violence, um, where where parents' mental health and mental well-being 
is, is, is so so significant that, that they're not able to care for their children. So the sorts of incidents where, where there may be police involvement, for example. Right. Um, there is a shortage of foster carers, uh, Michael. Bernardo's say there are hundreds of children who've been referred to Bernardo's and are waiting to be placed with a foster family. We urgently need more potential foster carers to come forward. If you're over 21, have a spare room and time and commitment to support a child in need, please do consider getting in touch with Bernardo's today. Uh, what would you tell people about what it's like being a foster parent? Um, I would say it's very rewarding. Um, my family, I mean, my wife and my two children, we've been foster carers for over 10 years. And I think it's about 14 years actually we've been doing it. And it's very rewarding. You know, we've met a lot of great kids over that time. And we've all sort of um, grown to get know ourselves better and to know how, how people operate and how they work and how they think. Um, you know, I think also as well that I think if you've got a spare room in your place, that is the thing to do. Yeah. You know, um, but it's it's not it's, it can't be straightforward and easy all the time, Michael. I mean, be honest no, about that as well. It, yeah, I mean, there's there's ups and downs. You know, there's there's times I feel like I want to stop doing it because the, the pressure can be quite quite intense. You know, mm -hmm. um, because from for my family, we've got to manage ourselves as a family and also the young person and their family. Um, you know, to 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 make it work. And you're you're talking to social workers, like I've got my own social worker. Um, the child has got a social worker, and then there's a school, then there might be a court guardian you have to deal with, and it's about managing this whole team, trying to work together to support the child. Yeah. And I think, you know, what I've found is that, um, you know, I, I have, I've had a lot of training um, during, the, during the coronavirus on the Microsoft team, um, doing stuff on that meeting with other foster carers. And I think training is, is, is where it's at. And I think it's, it's one of the reasons why I made, made a short film many years ago to try and, you know, remind myself about what it's like for a, a young person to be in care and to be a family worker. And, um, you know, I think it's just, I just think it's a good thing to do. And I think for myself, how I kind of got into it, because um, me and my wife were talking about this yesterday, and both of us have had sort of similar experiences where we've seen our parents sort of looking after young people when, you know, when we were children looking at them. And it's, it's quite funny that we've, we've kind of come together and we've said, yes, we want to try and continue doing that. So it's, it's a very rewarding thing. And yes, it is hard at times. Um, but I think with the, with the training that we've had, um, you know, it definitely helps to get you to reflect on how the day went. So it's not just taking things personally. So when things do kick off, you know, it's about not taking it personal. It's about, okay, something's happening here. Let me try and understand what it is and then talk with the child to try and figure out how we can go forward. Well, thank you very much for telling us about it. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your time, uh, Michael McKenzie and Lewis Roberts. Thank you as well. For